persist until the formation of the National Wrestling Alliance in 1948. NWA as a central governing body, with its singular, undisputed world champion, would be absolute and undeniable. This control, combined with the expansion of the interstate highway system, and the inevitable popularity and availability of regional television, would usher in an era of wrestling that was defined by what would come to be known as the territory system. The territory system would dominate wrestling for nearly four decades, while the borders, authority, popularity, and obedience of individual NWA territories was in a near constant state of flux. To this day the impact and influence of these territories is still felt. Each territory had its own signature promoter and star. While it is impossible to cram these characteristics into a static, concrete map, we are damn sure going to try anyway. So open up your eyes We're before it gets too late Now one man There's no way you can Hit the street lights running Don't give a damn A simple explanation That you'll never find Never sacrifice We never leave them alone Is hate really worth the price? Look at what we've done Never care for compromise Always threatening someone's life And it feels like the end of the world Jimmy, yep. another week in wrestling. Yeah, and a good one too. And it was a it was a good one. Yeah. Right? Favorite yeah. of all the things you had, what impact, which I know you probably weren't into. Oh, goosebumpy. AEW. Oh, chills. And then the obviously classic. That Champions. was that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. My favorite was uh, Cody Rhodes discovering, hey, my arm, titanium. Awesome. You think he'll continue to use that? Sure, why not? I hope so. Let it lead to the bionic elbow thing you were talking about. Did you think at any point in that match that uh, he was going to beat Lesnar? No. Really? No. I figured this was the you won, I win. Right. And then we'll have the, the rubber match. I was questioning it. I, I thought the same thing going in. It says you win, I win. Right. But it was like he wasn't giving up. And I'm thinking, mm, I don't know. Are they going to let him get over on Lesnar again Twice? with a broken arm? No. No. But they sure made it... They made you feel that way for split seconds here and there. I can see that, but not me. What, I was like, no, what a there's no way. What a physical specimen Brock Lesnar <laughs> He's is. a beast. He's he, the beast. He's a beast. <laughs> he's the beast incarnate. No, he's great. He's great. He's fantastic. Well, what about Cody, though? You've got to be slightly mind blown about what Cody's become. I remember at first you were like, I don't know, this feels like Stardust, and then you started to watch more, because you didn't really catch a yeah, lot right, of his yeah, right. in between sure. coming back, you know? I mean, this, he's Absolutely. a stud now, isn't he? Um, the WWE is, uh, again, I don't want to be anti-AEW, but the WWE, you could see the difference on how you smartly right. get a wrestler into position yeah. to eventually defeat the head of the table. Yeah. And wouldn't you know it, too, one of their greatest traits is patience. Yes. Which is what the Marks will say they don't have any of. But again... They got plenty of it. The, the problem with patience... Yeah. Which you didn't get in the Attitude Era, because there wasn't a lot no. of patience in the Attitude Era. No. Uh, but I think that had to do with Russo's writing. Right. Than anything a lot else. of crash TV. Right. Right. Yeah, you go. Gotcha. But the one problem with patience, I think, is it can change, right? All of a sudden, it's like... Man, Roman is raking in the dollars for mm. us, and I don't want to pull the trigger. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Or someone gets hurt, or whatever. That is the only problem right. with patience. Right. But Cody, no doubt, is over. Oh, he's mad over. Mad over. He's killing it. The guy's killing it. You think it's the blonde hair? 
I, 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 I mean, what? There's so many things that have changed about him. The blonde hair being one of them. The stupid neck tattoo, which I think distinguishes him from other people. Really? Yeah. yeah. You kind of liked it. I didn't say I liked it. I said that it distinguishes him. I, I can't argue. See a punk with his stupid Pepsi thing. I understand. It, 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 it distinguishes him. Separates him from others. He's got a um, killer look going on. He does. He does, and he has the old school wrestler mm -hmm. look. I think mm -hmm. um, he looks like an old school wrestler. When you see him next to a Lesnar, look at his jawbone. Yeah, yeah. And you know, not for nothing, th those be some killer baby blues. Not to be weird, but right, no. I mean, the guy's piercing. He's he's got a piercing look to him. He's 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 on top right now. He's the goods, mm. and uh, eventually he'll be world champion. At no some, some point, he's going to hold the big belt. It's going to happen. I, I can't you know? disagree. Do you look at Seth's belt as lesser? Yes. Since we're on the big belt. Yes, I do. So do you look at it the way... Dramatically lesser. Do you look at it like, remember when the, the whole WWE, WCW thing happened, and then they were starting to use the world heavyweight champ, the big belt as a second... Is it kind of like sure. that? Uh, worse. Worse? Yeah. What, really? They already got off to a bad start. It's what? like wow. they wanted to make him the defending guy, right? Yeah. And you already opened it up with a tag team match. It's the first thing I thought. I'm like, yeah, he's gonna... you know, if you're going <laughs> to. I didn't think of that. I, I keep on I'm going to defend this belt, I tag go... team. Being, being pro WWE <laughs> my whole life. Yeah. When the WWE all of a sudden takes over WCW and then they bring the U.S. title into the mix. Yeah. It's very anti-U.S. title because it, it, it was N.W.A. Well, it ain't shit compared to our Intercontinental. Well, party. that's the way I felt. Right. But that changed for me when Cena won it and was defending that was every cool. week. He was elevating it. It was, and he elevated enough to me that yeah. I found it much more important than the Intercontinental title, which right, which you know, which would how not the, have been the case. How about the belts kind of flip flop from time to time? You know, like the Intercontinental title becomes like look at Gunther right now. For example, Gunther, I, the wrestler I'm into, right? The Intercontinental Belt still doesn't hold the same weight it's as the U.S. The longest title. reign of this I know. century. I agree. I love what's going. on I don't on like the here. belt. First of all, I hate it. I hate the look. Really, of it. I don't like it. I hmm. think you said you liked it, right? I don't mind it. It's it's not. It doesn't annoy me. No, it's fine. I don't have a problem with it. I always think about the green belt, yeah, which I love. I yeah, um, and then. Savage's Intercontinental title. That was nice. It was a good-looking belt. That was nice. This one's kind of a, a hybrid of the green belt that we love so much, right. I think, but it's not the green belt. It's okay. It's not too offensive. You don't like the New World Heavyweight belt, right? hate it. Really? Does, hate it, does it. it look a little too much like the AEW championship? Too gold. That's too what gold. I was thinking. Mm. Boy, we really are marking out here like we making are. fun it of belt. You know, oh, this belt, you know, you yeah, could use yeah, some... Uh, it is. Some frills on it or what something. What was your favorite? Stone Cold's belt. What was your, that Stone, was your favorite the, the, belt? You don't even have to finish the question. Stone Cold's wow. belt. Yeah, Stone Cold wow. smoking skull belt? I love Black Sabbath. How can I not love that? Over the green intercontinental title. Oh, not even close. That wow. smoking skull belt? Even over the green Bob Backlund belt. Who is the last person to show up in an event with a belt on his shoulder. Me yeah. or you, right? Right. Okay? Yeah, well, yeah. You hand me that smoky skull belt? <laughs> where's, my, where's my wrestling lollipop? Ooh, That's w, funny. My WWF ice cream ball with my... my yeah. So what differentiates a stone cold belt? It's just so badass. It was a badass looking dude. It was a it was badass bad. looking You're right. belt. Had a little red on it. It was, yeah, it was, it was mint. good looking belt. It was. I'm sure, you, you must have liked the Rocks belt then too. Yeah, the Rocks belt was nice. I liked the old. What was the Eagles? The Eagle look. That was a San Martino's. That's wasn't a long. It? That was a great. That look. was a good looking. That belt. was a great look. I didn't mind the WWF title during the Attitude Era. It was pretty nice. It didn't have the globe and stuff. Or, but then again, I always like the old NWA title. I too. do like that. Oh, wait a minute, you do? I thought oh. I asked you about that. No, the not the the original. No, NWA the original NWA title. Yeah, that's that's kind of that kind of warrant like. That's badass. Got me over. Honestly, that feels like a sporting belt, doesn't it? Does. It, it, it feels does. like, hey, this shit's real. <laughs> it does. No, it, yeah, no, right. it does. That's some good stuff. So Ronda Rousey yeah. still knows how to annoy her co-workers <laughs> and WWE fans. <laughs> Ronda Rousey is a champion at WWE once again on Monday Night's Raw. She and her partner Shayna Blazer won the four-man tag team match for the vacant women's title. Mm. You'd think that her latest accomplishment would have her feeling good about the place in the WWE, but she sounds anything but happy. 
Based on her latest comment, the baddest woman in the planet tells the New York Post she's growing frustrated with the lack of competition in the WWE. Many of the tag team women's divisions are thrown together haphazardly. However, the WWE women's division is stacked of world-class athletes like legends such as Becky Lynch, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Trish Stratus, Bailey, Charlotte Flair, Liv Morgan, Carmella, Natalia, Alexa Bliss, Raquel Relieve, uh, Rodriguez, Shotzi, Black Tom, and many more. Thoughts Shotzi? on... Shotzi? Listen, really? you know... You, you feeling put... all right when you wrote that? That wasn't me that put that, Oh, dude. okay. I, I just <laughs> copied and pasted. <laughs> gotcha. Shotzi. <laughs> okay. Thoughts on Rhonda's comments? Um, I'm, I'm very confused with Rhonda's recent booking and run because I'm not sure if she's cool with this booking. She seems to just... I don't know. It feels like she's just settled into, okay, I guess this is my deal, and uh, I'll do it. She doesn't seem like she's all into it. I like, feel like Rhonda is just one of the girls. A right? couple of comments real quick. Greg Gar says the NWA belt Harley Race held was the ultimate badass oh, belt. Oh, it's great. RJ Hudson, the smoking skull was great, but my favorite was the big eagle belt, that undisputed yes. title Brock and Kurt Angle held in that, 2002 and That was three. very cool. That's the one I... That, that's what the one I'm thinking about from the the eagle reference I made oh, earlier. Okay, I yeah, gotcha. that was really nice. But Backlund did have an eagle belt too. Yes, at the he Bruno, did. Right? And then that they was went beautiful to the green belt. belt. Yes. I don't know about this green though with the belt. You always seem to like the green. Is that a, the Jet fan in you? Um. Oh, by the way, it was I'm so not the, bad I'm, it was good. Okay. How's that? Oh yeah, I can go with like Uncle Floyd. Like if I was a belt collector, <laughs> so I've got a couple of belts in my man cave. I've got the yeah. original Intercontinental belt repl replica, right? Signed by Valentine and Santana, which they didn't hold either. That particular belt, I would have been nice if I had Patera right. sign. Right. Then we have the green Intercontinental belt, which is signed by Tito and Greg. Right. I would love to have Morocco sign it. Does Tito know you have the belt that he had left in yes, his basement? We spoke about it. In the That's thing. right. Oh, he does. Know. I snuck okay. in his garbage and I took it, and yeah. I was pissed off. Riba. And then I have the a Hulk Hogan original championship replica belt signed by Hogan, which is beautifully done. Nice. Um, so am I a belt collector? If I was, if I got get my hands on it, I would get the Bob Backlund belt. That would be cool. Bob, I'm sure. Nasty belt. Did we ask Bob if he has his title from all those? We did not. We should. Well, what do you think? Do you think Bob Backlund has it? I don't think he would have. I don't think no, back then I, collecting stuff I think this back then mattered. it was like, give me my belt. You know, right. Like, yeah, he'll let me hand it over to you. Right, right. right. Unless exactly. you're Stan Hansen and you're running it over. Yeah, oh, you're running it over. <laughs> right. Now the wrestlers get to keep their belts. And, right. and yeah. They, they, they well, it it's a participation trophy. There you go. <laughs> Do you ever see them like being interviewed in their house? I wonder when we talk to D'Lo Brown in the main show, right? How many belts he'll have hanging up? They on better him. have given him the European title because he freaking carried that belt during the Attitude Era. Yeah, he was wearing it all the time. Um, MJF, yeah, coming off of uh, his pay per view. Mm. By the way, that pay per view, um, not barely half the fans showed up. Number one. I'll make this statement, hmm. and I'm again, I'm trying not to be anti-AEW, but if a billionaire did not own that oh, organization, it would have been closed you're a done. long time Absolutely ago. Absolutely done. This is definitely a Junior's play thing. Yeah. It is. It's Junior's play thing. And M it's not very good. MJF fires shots at Indie Fed, New Japan Wrestling, despite <laughs> he being praised by one big star who pops him, everybody else... Is the drizzling shit? Talk to me about MJF, Pharaoh. Are you losing faith in MJF? No, I don't lose faith in MJF, but I do. I do chuckle at some of the shock things he says because he's clearly doing this to get attention, and and it works most of the time for him. Um, saying that, do I have to wrestle at the Forbidden Door? F that. It's an F in indie fed. Calling New Japan Pro Wrestling an indie fed will instantly get you heat with their target audience. The marks. Instantly. Uh, like, for example, you know that I'm a bit of a mark myself. So, sure. you know, I mean, I love New Japan. Right. You ca AEW calling New Japan an indie fed? Hardy, har, har. You're the indie fed compared to New Japan. Historically. You think? It's not even close. It's not even close. I mean, I spent years watching the New Japan Network. Every year, okay, you tell me, does AEW do this? Every year, they have their own WrestleMania, Wrestle Kingdom, and you get sixty to 80,000 people. AEW do that? Mm. They don't do that. 
They have a lineage going all the way back, New Japan. How many decades now? By the way, Luce agrees with you. MJF is a saving grace for AEW wrestling in general. He is. You take away MJF and CM Punk's big mouth, and I'm really not sure who's paying attention to what over there. Tell you the truth. If you're looking for here, mainstream here, here's, attention, here's the problem. mainstream attention, outside of those two, I don't think you're getting much at all. Every time I watch MJF Farrow, I mm -hmm. think to myself, yeah. Every time he opens his mouth now, yeah. he gets farther and farther away from the WWE. Like, right. I, I think when he first started, people were like, hmm, definitely garnered some attention from the WWE. Mm -hmm. But as he keeps going on, I mean, that whole press conference, mm -hmm. all he did was drop F-bombs. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about it on the show, right? If, we, if, we, if you curse too much, it loses effect. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. Right. He does it way too much. I think that... This is going to be the, the strangest uh, analogy I'll probably ever give you, okay. but this is how I look at MJF. I look at him as if, if he came to WWE, he'd be leaving the Red Sox and going to the Yankees. Okay. I'm going to use Johnny Damon as the parallel. Johnny Damon, when he played for the Red Sox, looked like Jesus Christ with a baseball bat. Completely different look and feel than is accepted as a New York Yankee. He joins the Yankees, snip, snip, snippy, all clean-shaven. Now, psychologically, this could mess with you. But he adjusted to the new companies. Which one was the better Johnny Damon as a player? They were both mind? great, and I'll tell you why. They were both great. Okay. Because Johnny Damon stole two bases in one play in the World Series, and of the four Yankees who gave us our last world title, he was one of the four best during that run. Understood. Matsui, Damon, Jeter, and A-Rod carried us right. during that, that postseason. But put that aside. But what I'm saying is, is, is that you can adjust and go to a place that's more constricted with their rules, more confined about how you're going to carry yourself and conduct yourself and yada, yada, yada. Sure, it's a stretch to use these two things. But I believe that MJF is clever enough, smart, uh, you know, smart enough, quick enough on the draw, and willing to take instructions behind the scenes. I believe that if he came to the WWE, they would definitely take a little bit off the fastball, but keep him in the box where he could still be shocked without the vulgarity. Mm. I think he can do it. Gotcha. Roddy Piper could do it. Why can't he? Well, I keep envisioning MJF doing a Piper's Pit type of Fantastic thing. Fantastic stuff, man. Right? And that, by can the way, he carry that and, ball? And by the way, if he had that talk show, it would actually distinguish, to be fair, from all these ridiculous talk shows we have now. His would stand out, this in my is true. opinion. My opinion. Right. You're right. Yeah. Let's, let's roll it over to Tony Khan. Yeah, what about him? So MJF is doing his press conference. You know, right. The, the strong, Crapping on New Japan. Right. right. And... By the way, that whole format they took from New Japan, that you like so much. Yeah. It's for, it directly lifted no, from totally the Indie Fed. And the WWE yeah. took it too now. Absolutely. Which is fine. It's, it's great. okay to take. It's great. It's great. Here's the issue I have. Mm. Tony Khan is not learning. No. Like his, of course his daddy not. should send him to some leadership courses. Because these wrestlers are just stomping all. Like, there's a video out there now. You guys could probably catch it out there. They separate Tony Khan and... MJF in this video, mm -hmm. and then MJF's talking. You could watch Tony Khan's expression, mm -hmm. and it's like this guy has no control no. over what's going on. No, he sits there like a deer in the headlights, especially when a wrestler is completely stepping over the line. Yeah, he just sits there like bub, 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 bub. it's the complete opposite of Vince McMahon. Do you think wrestling fans would respect him more if in the middle of the scrum he's like, listen? You know, or like interrupt. By the him. way, the day that he does that, that's a work. <laughs> that's true. I'm just letting you know. You're right. Yeah. The day he does that, that's a work. He'll never be Vince McMahon. Who's he going to feud with? So, he has no mic skills. But we, we, <laughs> he's oh, not by a the character. Way, those every week he's special not a announcements. Oh, he stinks. Awful. He cannot Awful. talk. He's not. Vince McMahon wasn't just a genius and the owner and the creator and the promoter. He was an entertainer. That guy's entertaining. He gets it. He gets it in every last facet of entertainment. Well, can I, can, I, can I give you my analysis of why? Sure. So Vince McMahon started off as an announcer. Right. A damn good one, by right. the way. Eric Bischoff, what did he start off as? Hello? Tony Khan's first thing when he opened AEW mm. should have been, I'm announcing. Got to start. Right? Gotta start, start there with your group of announcers and then... Come out Isn't this it. walking before you run? Yes. Isn't that logical? Get you ready for uh, yeah. the future. No, it's just a toy to him. It's just a toy to him. And by the way, his father doesn't pay any attention to it. Eventually, his father might look at the bank account one day and go, um, 
Tony. Greg R says Tony yeah. Khan is Herb Abrams without the cocaine. I, that's that's not bad. That's not bad. I can I, see that. Hard to disagree. Yeah, I kind of I can. Yeah, I like that one. No cocaine for Tony. Herb Abrams, by the way, was awful too. He was horrendous. He was. It, it was, was terrible. Awful. He was terrible. The only reason Herb Abrams is even famous is because he dropped dead of a coke. Yeah, he was. Cocaine, he's, and, he's, he ripped, he's a, and, and he ripped off people, right. which we're going to talk about on the next show because I got to tell you. I'm not going to get into it, right? Because right? okay. that's not part of the show. But gotcha. enough of these wrestlers working people. Oh, God. I know that was part of the it's game. It's all they do. But it's out of control. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, there comes a point where you're just hurting people, I right. think. It's you know the boy I mean? who cried wolf after a while. Absolutely. All right. Well, last night, mm -hmm. CM Punk, AEW return. Good mm -hmm. move or huge mistake? Uh, as far as their company goes, they need CM Punk on as often as possible, even with all of his controversies, because CM Punk is still an attention magnet. The, the, the bottom line is, is you want people to be talking about your company. And like I said to you earlier, MJF and, and CM Punk are polarizing. There's no one else there that's polarizing. None. They need to lean on these two as much as possible. And is one on one show and one on the other? Is yes. that how this is going to work? That's what I believe. Good, yeah. eventually have them, you know, doom let me again. Ask, let me ask you this question. Because it's still better than anything else. Are you setting up Punk for failure? Because you're putting him on hmm. Saturday night, starting yeah. June 17th. I know. At 6.05 <laughs> p.m., wow. right? They got some nerve, those guys. But it's to me, it's is like... It's a two-hour show. It's two hours, 6.05 to 8 I don't point? even know. If it was an hour show. Right. My point is, yeah. as, if you're the biggest wrestling fan... Yeah. I ain't staying home Are at 6.05. Are you staying home at 6.05? This is not the day and age where the time is so important anymore. That's you right. watch the damn thing whenever you want. Exactly. You can watch it whenever you freaking now, want. Now, you'd probably be smart and not put it on your social media networks and make it only available that time oh, it's, live. It's easy for me to avoid everything and then just watch the damn thing. Absolutely. I want. It's easy enough, you know. I no, mean, I have to go on look, Facebook. I, ah, I could see looking forward to a Monday night. Yeah. Even a... Look, Monday even, night's a great time. That's right. great. That's even great. a Friday night, you can get away with, dude. Yeah, you can. You know, well, Saturday Smackdown, nights for, Smackdown for, always did it. Right. So but Smackdown know, Saturday, was right. Yeah, it is, Smackdown's a really good show. Who the hell is going to stay home from 6.05 to 8 p.m. on a Saturday mm. to sit there and watch AEW wrestling? I don't even get it, man. I, I, I got to tell you, when I look at this, I'm like... I've said to you before, you and me couldn't run a wrestling company. Oh, really? Well, I think we could do better than Tony. I'm going to now agree with you. Yeah, I told you all along we could do better than Tony. It's uh, it's utterly ridiculous. Yeah, no, nah, Tony's just a mark for you know he's too much of a mark. It's just like, come on, dude, take some take some hints from the company that's always made it work at least. Try that sometime. All right, here's another guy getting on under, under my skin, Willa Yuta. Yeah, Willa. Willa Yuda yeah, has what proven about to me, and I want you to weigh on this is. Yeah. He's just, he just can't, the guys he's wrestling with, mm -hmm. he just, he, 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 he needs more training. Okay. He, his timing is bad. Mm -hmm. um, the way he, he doesn't need, so during the pay-per-view, there's that spot where they super kick, uh, I think Moxley, and it's an exploding super kick. Okay. Pretty big thing, right? right. Boom, exploding super kick. Sure. Will Yuta comes running in from outside the ring and starts attacking the Young Bucks like right after the kick. Okay. Even myself, who who doesn't know anything about anything, is like, "What are you doing, dude? You got to let this thing breathe. Like, let the fans yeah. enjoy it." Right. And right. then it come, you know. Then I thought, "Oh, you're being tough on this guy, Monty. So let's watch Will Yuta last night, and he he's getting destroyed. A million moves made on him, and then finally." Um, Bandito does this huge, dude, the frog splash he gave him was right. like. Monstrous. 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 He kicks out and then puts, him, puts Bandito in some kind of move and Bandito taps out. What? I'm just like. Moves mean nothing anymore in that company pretty much. Terrible. Is what terrible. You, is Stingers, what how are you, me. buddy? What's up, Stingers? What is up? Thoughts on Willie Uta? I have very little thoughts on Willie Uta. You know what I almost feel like? I almost feel... You ever, you ever see a wrestler who's been shoehorned into something they're pushing with guys who've already made it, and there's this other guy that's in there? Right. That's that other guy. Is there another... Is there, <laughs> 
no, you're right. He's right there. You're right. You know what I mean? You got like, oh, you got Danielson, oh, Moxley, and even Cesaro. I like, Claudio Kai. Oh, yeah, we got Wheelie Yuta. I don't understand okay. AEW this, Whatever. right? So, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you keep pushing Wheelie Yuta. Right. But Rusev, what's his name now in AEW? Miro. Miro. Yeah. He gets pushed to the side. You dude, let him go. Dude, what a joke. Then you have some kid, I can't even remember his name now, beat Jericho. Right. Right? Like, that's a big deal. Is that right. Daniel Garcia? No. Who was, oh, was, oh, oh, Flash, whatever. Flash, was it. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, Flash. And what have Flash. they done with that guy? Flash, now? Flash Flintstone. When, when, <laughs> yeah, when one, two, three, kid know. beat Razor Ramon. Right. It's kid carried Launched on. Launched into a yeah. Hall of Fame career. It's like, what are you. I don't know what they're doing. They have no follow through. They never, they always do this. They put eight pounds of poop in a two pound bag. Then you got Taz's son. It's like, what happened have, to him? I don't know what's going on. Talk about losing moment. Hook was the was the bomb. Right. You had this little guy coming across like a badass. What did you do there? They let all the air out of that balloon. They don't have they don't they don't get it. You're right. It, you know, basically it is it's Daddy's Tony cash. Khan it's Daddy's has cash to, and this is my toy. He's gotta be writing these and shows. He must be there's no agent in their mind that would do this. By the way, do they ever say, hey, we got these important writers? You never hear that, do no, you? No, you don't. Because Tony's doing everything, right? Is he And by the who, way, Johnny Photo, everything? who's in next week, yeah. uh, Johnny Photo, a friend of the show who used to work yeah. for the WWE. Mm -hmm. Um, he's no longer working with them. Um AEW's production, he told oh. me, because he tried, you know, he, he applied and they interviewed him. Okay. And he said their production um, budget yeah. is extremely low. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. They, had, they feel bland to me on a show level. Am I missing something, or was but, I just but, raised but, on but, Kiss? But, there, but there's the miss, you know? right? It's like spending your money on the wrestlers and not the production is right. a mistake. That's ridiculous. You know, spending your money on the production and making the wrestler is right. the answer. That is a proven formula. What's in a look? Everything. <laughs> they, what? Yeah. What part of that are you missing? Yeah. What's in a look? Hey, live from someone's living room. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. Someone kill me. What are you talking Thank about? Thank you. I Thank mean, you. hello, TV studio, hello. And now they're even oh my god, booze. I mean, Don, Don Carris, whatever the fuck Don Callis? Yeah, comes in there, and it's like, you think this guy had the most heat in the world. There wasn't even enough people to make that amount of noise. Right. It didn't even match. And anyone that defends it and says that right. was not Stop. piped in, right. like at least in a SmackDown right. or a Raw thing, right. You obviously they do pipe in stuff, but you could believe it because there's... 15,000 yes, people. Yeah, he's, he's 20, 4,000 people. It sounds yeah. like there's a million people booing this guy. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it guy? be great if the production guy messed up and, like, slipped on the button and you hear, like, two people? <laughs> ah, you stink. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Like, you know, <laughs> instead of the massive booze. That would be awesome. That'd be hilarious. Takeaways from Night of Champions. Yeah. A couple things I wrote down. Tell me if you agree. All right. WWE's production team is second to none. They make mid-level storylines feel like the most important feud of the year sometimes. Mm. This package... That open the show was great. Correct. I agree. They get you pumped up for the next few hours. They know how to start a car. They sure do. The stage was huge. The walk to the ring was a little on the long side because the stadium was so big. This will never bother me because uh, Seth Rollins ran like three miles at WrestleMania a couple of years back. And I was like, wow, are, you need a bottle of water while you're cashing in? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, right. no, nah, it's fine. It was fine. They, they adjust to their surroundings and they usually make... Good on what they're dealing Rollins with. Rollins' jacket was appropriately <laughs> ridiculous. I love that jacket. It's so poofy. I was like, he, he almost looked cute. I was like, <laughs> look at Seth. I love that jacket. It was hilarious. It was always great when early near falls only get a one count. It allows them to keep getting closer and closer to the pin over time. Mm -hmm. When they start with the close two counts, it goes nowhere. <clears throat> this might be one of the most intelligent things you have ever written down. Thank you. That is massively. Well, thank you, Mr. That Farrow. is massively correct. So correct. I love kickouts at one early in a match. I love that because no, you ain't gonna get away with this so easy I love tonight. When a wrestler jumps on and tries to get the quick count right away, right? It makes you feel like they're actually He's trying, trying to win. To, yeah. He's trying to win the match. Absolutely, boy. It makes just too yeah, much it, sense. Like in real life. You don't want to sit there and have a marathon where you're out of gas and out of energy and you're spent. You want to get a quick win and get the hell out of there. Who that. the hell has a bar fight and says, yeah, you know, hit me a few times before. Ah, you know what? I'm just getting started. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? You want to annihilate and go back to your beer? 
Absolutely. The suplex styles used to send the visionary into the corner was nasty. Rollins looked like he landed right on his head. <laughs> yeah. But that was just because as good at, at he's, selling a he's, spot. He's great at selling spots, although I do worry about Probably, him Probably, you know what, don't tell me Kenny Omega is the greatest wrestler. Seth Rollins is the greatest wrestler on the planet, and he has been. We're talking about wrestler in the ring. Right. For the last three years. It's interesting that you say that because Seth Rollins and Kenny Omega are very similar in some ways to me. So they both kill the wrestlers, but if I'm picking one, I would love to see how, I'll, I'll probably never see it, but I would love to see how Kenny Omega would handle WWE, the audience, the crowds, the, 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 the bits, the scripts, and everything else. He is amazing in ring wrestler, but Seth Rollins is right there with him. And if anybody doesn't think that, then they're just hating on WWE. Mm. Because what I just said is probably pretty controversial to some people. Gotcha. And I don't give a damn because they are similar to each other. You know, they really are. I would love to see Omega come here. I know it'll never happen. Though. No matter who does it, a reverse suplex always looks so precarious. Oh, it looks nasty as shit. The way Rollins landed on the apron after Styles suplexed him was scary. Yep. That's... Uh... Why do they do that, by the way? You know damn well that's the hardest part of the mat. Why, why, why do they do that? So they can eventually have a Facebook fund? I mean, what you, what's with the apron? It's yeah, nasty stuff, no. man. By the way, nobody knows how to land on an apron like Kota Ibushi. That's a whole other story. But uh, how do you think about AJ? AJ's a good soldier, right? Gave, AJ, gave AJ, a great match, didn't he? AJ won me over. When he first came to WWE, well, over for years, uh, I was like, come on. Because I hated him in Impact Okay. TNA. Well, he was completely different. But he, yeah. Hall of Famer. Oh, absolutely. He's as great as great can be. He's, he's, And that's another one who's right there. You know, the Kenny Omegas, the AJ Styles, and yeah, the Seth Rollins. There's some great, All great right. ability out there. Finish off the show. Yeah. Need your opinion. Yeah. The Bloodline story, if anyone was getting bored with it, it just keeps Ooh. going. It's so it's good. It's great. To me, it, it ranks up there. It is. But give me your top five storylines in any federation at any time, in mm. your opinion. Well, it's going to obviously... And it probably deserves a little more time than we're giving it today, yeah. but go ahead. I'll try to rattle off some of... Well, first of all, the bloodline would be one of my five. Um, Austin McMahon storyline. Come on. Absolutely. How can we ignore that one? Absolutely. Um, honestly, the NWO storyline especially who's the third member and everything that led up to it, and even some of the stuff that happened after it. The NWO storyline was amazing. Absolutely. Uh, I say the Cobra Clutch Challenge. Ooh, wow. I say the Cobra Clutch wow. Challenge storyline. Come on, that went on week after week after week, and then eventually Pat Patterson, the announcer, gets involved, and then the Great Alley fight and all that other stuff. I know that's a little old school for some folks, but those who remember the Cobra Clutch Challenge and that storyline, the whole buildup, Amazing. Now, I wonder if that... I need another one, though, don't I? How many do I have here? Oh, Hogan Andre. Mm. One of the greatest storylines of all time. And my personal favorite one, Hogan Savage. I hate you, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Uh, so there's a, there's a bunch. A couple of comments. Jason says Hogan Andre saga. Yep. Um, Brother, you're bleeding. That was great. Let me see here. Tore the cross off Hogan on Lucky you. Three Lucky Dogs said AJ doesn't take a backseat to anybody. No, he doesn't. Davio he's... says Britt Baker looking a little thick yesterday. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Lucky Dog says the shield was awesome. The shield really wasn't shield storyline, was... though, right? The, the breakup of the shield was good. Dude. Stinger says Break... bloodline number one, LOL yeah. what? Who said the bloodline was the greatest one of all time? No, yeah, I don't think you said that. You said it's in the top five. It, I think it is. I don't think you cannot put it in the top five. Well, you, if you don't, if you don't want to, that's your opinion. That's fine. But, but I don't think you but can. Anyone who, but anyway, but if you're going to chuckle at a storyline that has done what it's done for the last almost two two years now or whatever, what are you talking about? This is an excellent, patient, twisting right storyline that just keeps going. It's it's been fantastic. He's saying Bloodline only draws one point five million. Okay, and CM Punk draws I know, one. I got, I got to be I got to be <laughs> fair on this one. It, it it's not the same. Right, it it's isn't. not the same. Yeah, I mean because about, if you're gonna say it only draws one point five million, I'm gonna say this. Okay, Counterpoint Stingers, who I love very much. Okay. so don't take it personal. Yeah. They also draw the most money in the history of wrestling. Right, so you can't call. Yeah, which times is which? are different. Right, right, because times are different. Let me ask you: Are the stadiums being sold out? The, Is there 80,000 people at WrestleMania? Roman Reigns, 
You know, has we're not, sold we're not robots. more tickets I mean, people, and made more absolutely. money the product than any winning. wrestler in history. Yeah. Now, if you want to say it's different, money sure. is you know much more expensive. Sure, sure, right. but also cable's different too. Right. Roman right? Reigns is one of the all-time greats. I, I hate to break it to folks, but he is. Davio, you know. Rick Rude, Jake Cheryl storyline was awesome. That was awesome. So many great storylines. That story was a great storyline. But you got to talk about the top ranking ones. That was a damn good one. I like that one. Anyway, guys, want you to join us at 9 o'clock. We've got the great D'Lo Brown in studio. Um, it's pretty, really uh, look forward to it. It's very a pretty excited. honky kind of D'Lo, but It I tried. was a little honky. Yeah, well, yeah. Jay Will says, when Ole Anderson turned on Dusty Rhodes at the Omni. Dude, nice. this, dude, how about when the Freebirds turn on Kerry Von Erich? Right. I mean, there's so many great The Freebird Von Erich feud forever. That's a Absolute, killer storyline. Oh, my Lord. How about the... Orndorff turn on Hogan. That was great. Or how about the Orndorff turn on Piper? What about Zabisco and Bruno? Oh my God! What are we talking? Oh my God! Yeah, we could we could. Was go there on. a build on Zabisco Bruno? Yeah, there was. Yes, there was because Larry kept challenging Bruno to a friendly match, and he kept going, "Oh no, I can't, kid, I can't." And then finally got pressured into it, and then we had the great turn. All right, put you on the spot. Yeah. Greatest storyline in history. Greatest storyline in history. It has to have the greatest payoff. That's Hogan Andre. And I will say this. But it has to have the, the Hogan greatest Andre payoff. story, whether by design or accident, yeah. started years mm -hmm. before it, it sure actually happened. It really did. It really did. It did. It's and it started years before with Hogan as the bad guy and Andre as the good guy. Ah. Amazing. I'm gonna go with you on that. Yeah. Jay Will, Freebirds blinding JYD almost got them killed in the midst. Listen, dude, there's yeah. so yep. many there great storylines. There are. I mean, look, we had Ronnie Garvin in here. How about when Ronnie Garvin turns on Dusty Rhodes in Baltimore? Mm -hmm. What about Valentine and Santana? That was a great storyline. Great storyline. Yep. A lot of them. How about, if you want to consider a storyline, and you should throw it in there, mm. Valentine Piper. When Valentine Piper come to the WWE, they still finish out the storyline on yep. Piper's pit, right? Yep, they did. And they kind of shake hands. And I know, I know this will make you cringe a little bit, but it's undeniable. CM Punk, the summer of Punk, when he was going to leave. And, you know, that, that, the, dude, that's yeah. a great story. That is Close a great storyline. to Vince McMahon yeah. after beating uh, John. Oh, my God. That's Davio, great, great one. I was just thinking about that. When Dusty Rhodes needed a partner, and he brings in Nikita Koloff. That was amazing. How about this one? But my name's on this list. Damn. Are you kidding? Great one. You just made the list. Great one. That was amazing, Jericho and Owens. All right, with that, 9 o'clock. Send us on our way, buddy. You've been watching This Week in Wrestling. And until next week in wrestling. Later.